welcome to the fourth and last video in this series. In this video, I want to talk about adding the cloak in to your lunge practice. Um, like the third video on the dagger, the sword is primary, the cloak is a supporting tool, therefore the first and second videos still apply, um, working on your mechanics, on your structure, your form. So this is just about how to add the cloak into your offhand as you're working on your good structure and your good form and then start building up possible tactics with the cloak. And once again, this is not meant to be a comprehensive video, just giving you some ideas on how the cloak can be used and then hopefully build up your own tactics and start practicing ideas that you want to play with with the cloak. So what I mean by cloak is a garment that you could actually wear that would be the size, the shape, the weight of a cloak in the 16th, 17th centuries. For me, I have this cassock, which is probably one of the lighter things that I would use as a cloak. And I have this full wool and linen cloak. And the way that I would grab it and use it, I'll use my left hand on that same side of the cloak. So if I'm using my right hand, I would use it on the right side of the cloak. I'll grip it near the neck or down near the chest and let it fall off my shoulder. Then I will flip it once, twice, or if I want to use, a, use it as a fully armored arm, I'll go all the way around until I've got it fully padded on my arm. But usually I will use it with a bit of a hanging wall here. So how do you use the cloak? Really, anyway, if you want to, or that is uh, legal within your rule set. Um, but there are three general ways that you will see historically that the cloak was used. The first way is, as I mentioned, using it to fully protect your arm. This is the method you might use to stop cuts coming in. Um, with a caveat here, if I'm playing against something that's more of a side sword, a wider blade, I'll want to stop it closer to the forte. I'll want to close faster and stop it while the cut is still in, in preparation or just starting its arc. Um, with a thinner rapier, and I've even seen some historical rapiers that have no edge, they're, they're technically just four foot long ice picks. These, you can stop from a bit more of a distance. They're not gonna cut through this much wool and, and, uh, and linen. They may bruise you, they may do some damage to your arm, but they won't be slicing through the cloak. So if you're going to use the cloak as an armored arm effectively, then first off I would say, get the heaviest cloak you can find to practice with. Uh, and then the two general ways to work it are to practice holding it out and above your head in a long lunge and to practice closing quickly, stopping that forte and then achieving that lunge. You also might just simply practice holding it out for long, longer and longer periods of time, 20 seconds, 30 seconds. Make sure that your shoulder is still in its socket you're not reaching, as I talked about earlier with the sword, but holding that up there and getting used to the weight over your head and out in front of you. So another way to use a cloak is to throw it. You find this in several period manuals. Now, I only suggest doing this if you are pretty sure you're going to hit your target or if you actually just want to get rid of your cloak in the first place. But either way, there are three general ideas that you can use when throwing your cloak. So idea number one is to impair their vision, to wrap the cloak around their head, around their mask. So one thing to bear in mind in all three of these ideas is you don't want them to see you about to throw it. So if you have the cloak wrapped around your hand somehow, 
you need to be subtle about getting your hand ready to throw it so it doesn't tangle your own hand. So you might keep them occupied. You might keep their, their, them thinking about their sword as you're letting your, your cloak drape a little more. And then at the right moment, when you have their attention elsewhere, throw it and follow up with a good stab. So idea number two is similar to idea number one, but I'm not just targeting the head. I'm throwing the cloak but I'm throwing it at any target I wish to hit. And the idea here is I'm concealing the target with this big flapping piece of cloth coming at them. And I have to follow up the throw immediately with the thrust. So a way to practice this is to try to pin the cloak to the target you're aiming for and keep practicing until you can hit it a pretty good percentage number of times. So I'm approaching my target on the inside I loosen the cloak as we discussed, and then I throw and immediately follow up with the thrust, pinning the cloak to the target. So the third way to throw the cloak is to target the sword or the sword hand. This may be the easiest way to do it, and also you may not even have to let go of the cloak to do it right, but you still should practice it maybe against a friend, maybe if you have a dummy that you can have a stick or a sword attached to, uh, work on throwing it without fouling your own blade and closing in again immediately behind. So you might practice closing into measure, throwing down the middle of the sword and then stabbing, or you might actually release, try to throw for the sword hand, closing into measure, release for the sword hand, and thrusting. So a last word on throwing the cloak effectively. Um, I know a lot of people who like to fling the cloak out in front of themselves. I find this needlessly tiring and I find that I am generally handing my opponent my tempo to try and time themselves and come in on me. So I don't think that the Toro method of using a cloak is particularly productive, but certainly, as I described, throwing it at something could be a very useful alternative. And of course, you can also use your cloak as a barrier. So effectively, you're creating a wall of fabric. This leading edge can drive the blade away this drape can conceal targets or conceal your own actions. And the side of the drape can also sometimes stop cuts. So what you're doing is you're sticking the drape out there and you're effectively controlling the space in front of you, hopefully driving your opponent to make decisions you want them to make, right? Uh, but also simply just using this wall of fabric to control the space and to make sure that you are catching their thrusts and possibly stopping their cuts as well. Now, bearing in mind that even with conservative movements, this is slower than a dagger, which is another reason to practice with it. You have to get the timing right. You have to increase your strength, as I've said before, but you also want to keep the timing right and keep your sword and cloak from fouling each other, from getting in the way of one another. So you might practice constraining them on the inside line. Keep your cloak out in front of you to both conceal your legs, conceal your targeting, and use your sword to force them to go to your outside line. And then, as they switch sides to your outside line, you move your sword up in the secondo or prima, using your cloak across your body to protect against their blade. So you might practice constraining them on the outside line. So I would keep the cloak close to the sword, constrain them, force them to try to move to the, your inside line. Once they've moved to your inside line, 
You simply attack with a thrust in third, second, whichever you need, and extend your cloak out, catching their blade. So you can also practice using the cloak to conceal your sword. So you hold the cloak all the way out, pull the sword a little bit back, and you're concealing it from your opponent. So they don't know where you're coming in, although generally they have an idea that you've got, you've got to come around your cloak in this direction, right? But you're practicing not fouling your own sword with that thrust. You're practicing getting this cloak out of the way so that you can affect that thrust. So you might also practice closing at the cloak and keeping them from switching sides. So I'll close on the inside line, holding my cloak out in front of me, and then quickly advance to keep them from switching sides using the drape of my cloak. So more than with any other offhand weapon or tool, the cloak probably requires refinement with an opponent. So once you have practiced and you have your mechanics down, you have the flow of the cloak pretty well in hand, uh, you've practiced keeping your cloak and your sword from interfering with one another, it's a good idea to find a friendly opponent and drill against them or make up some martial games or even spar against them so that you can then take those actions and put them in use, working on your tempos, working on your measure, working on the provocations that you would use to open up the opportunity to use the cloak. And especially if you want to play with throwing the cloak. So it's very easy if an opponent is set and unmoving for them to then back out pull their point back or step back away from that thrown cloak. So you will want to practice getting your opponent to move towards you or move sideways and using that tempo to effect the throw. For instance, you might close on an opponent and as you gain their sword with yours, that's when you decide to toss the cloak on their hand or on their face. You're using that tempo where they're starting to think about being constrained and then you're adding one more level of complication into it. Remember that your solo drilling is for practicing your mechanics. It's for practicing your forms. It's for making sure that you're moving correctly, you're standing correctly, and you're avoiding injury. So that when you go into paired drills or you go into sparring, you're not having to think about how you're standing and how you're moving. You can work on your, your timing and your distance and your tactics. So be sure to practice both. Work on your solo stuff in your backyard, in your living room, in your garage. Work on your mechanics, how you're standing and how you're moving. Then go with a partner. Drill how the actions work together. Go into sparring and drill how to make your opponent move the way you want them to move using the structures that you built up to not work against you, but to work for you. And that is the end of this video, which marks the end of this series. I will put below in the description links to a couple more videos for those who want to explore the cloak a little more. I hope that this video series has helped you improve your structure. I hope it's helped you understand the lunge and some movements better. Uh, I really hope that you can, after watching these videos, think through some attacks and some movements that you want to make and come up with your own drills to work on those and to, again, create structures that aren't harming your body, that work for you and not against you. So now, go drill well and fight safely.